the Path Parent Parent Family Voices of Connecticut. I'm Nancy Lubogo, and this is Mama Circle Part 2. Today, we'll continue our talk on racism and raising Black children. Hi, ladies. Thank you for being here today. Yet, I'm going to start with you. You've always talked about how outside of your family bubble, your son is sometimes perceived as a threat. What have you done to prepare him for that? I have a son who is 17, um, who has autism and intellectual disability diagnosis. You know, fortunately, because of his ID, I think in a lot of ways he is oblivious um, to this idea of him being a threat. And so I'm thankful in a lot of ways for that. Um, However, it also saddens me to be out in the world to see how others look at him and see him as that threat. So what I have really tried to do is work with his school team um, because he does have an IEP, Individualized Education Plan, to work on specific goals to support him. I've also been in contact with the local um, local police to see what can be done. Very active with um, the DD Council in my state. Um, and we're really looking at figuring out, you know, for example, how we can um, work with local police to ensure that people are properly trained and have an understanding of, of what, you know, intellectual disability looks like. So really thinking about how I can set up programs to support him, use the existing, you know, education program to support him. All of those things are a way to help me to feel like I'm doing something to, to support him and feel better about him going out in the world. Thank you, Yetta. And over to you, Greta. Our educational system glosses over the dark history of slavery in this country. Can you share how you fill that gap for your children, including rarely told stories about Black excellence? I feel like as a parent, I really have this sort of dual awareness of the, of the education system here because I went through K through 12. Um, and I was often the only black child at my school, but in general, I was pretty otherized, you know, um, and so I'm actually kind of careful about wishing that the public schools take on the education of such a sensitive topic. Um, I think that already schools are not sensitive enough about some of the horrific uh, imagery that they bring up during history classes, you know, just uh, with, with any group. Um, you know, I'm old enough to remember when uh, the miniseries uh, Roots came. I can't tell you how um, difficult it was to be at school as the only Black kid and to, you know, the, the, the amount of mocking and taunting that that uh, sort of uh, teaching moment, because many of our teachers tried to uh, take that on as a way to teach. Um, but, you know, they didn't consider the fact that I had also, um, you know, seen those, those scenes and uh, could more closely envision it as myself and my own family. In terms of Black excellence, I feel that that uh, so much of Black liberation uh, ideology in the United States in particular has been kind of um, uh, based on uh, a Black ableism, abilities, and, you know, talents, tricks, you know, the magical Negro kind of, of um, icon. And I think that this is actually um, problematic and part of, of the work that we need to do because uh, the right to, to respect and to, um, you know, equity is God-given, and it's, um, you know, and I, I never want to even have the hint of teaching uh, one of our children that uh, developing themselves is for the purpose of exempting themselves from racism, because in fact, that's not possible, and it, it may distract them from their aim, you know, because their education is for their own purpose. I want them to know that, and the development of their talent is, uh, for their own names and to you know keep their own promises. Very interesting perspective. Thank you, Greta. In part one, we learned about the talk and how it is different for Black families. Ruth, as a white mama, did you even know about the talk? And did you have it with your son and daughters who are Black? No, we did not know about the talk. In fact, I've only recently learned about it as more and more people are coming forward with their stories. 
we brought up our children who are now young adults to believe that they were totally equal because that's what we believed. But sadly, the world kept proving us wrong. Our talk kind of evolved over time as we realized the extent of the biases and sometimes outright racism that our children were exposed to. You know, especially when he learned to drive, we mm -hmm. had further conversations with him about how you have to be the best driver on the road because you will be pulled over. He actually was pulled over by the police. He was actually kind of set up by the police officer. He was at a four-way stop and... Um, it, the police officer, it was their turn to go, and he didn't go, and he waited, and my son started to second-guess himself, and so eventually he went, and the police officer pulled around the corner and pulled him out, and the police officer literally grilled him for like 45 minutes, and he asked him what percentage tints he had on his windows, who the car belonged to. He like asked him all the questions from his driver's test, like check if he knew all the answers. I've never heard of anybody being asked things like this when he was pulled over before. It, my son thankfully answered very respectfully. And thank God he reacted the way he did because that could have gone a totally different way if my son had got frustrated or said the wrong thing. It's, it's been a shock to be honest how often these things have come up in their in their short lives it really goes to show that it's never too late to have the talk thank you ruth lastly to moretta as a black mama dealing with the educational system do you feel like you had input into your daughter's education and was it valued by professionals i did not feel like my input into my daughter's education was valued um it is. It was definitely very unfortunate um, because the fact is, I know my daughter better than anyone else. Now there were there there were two occasions where I did feel my input was valued, and that was probably two years of my daughter's elementary school education, and then maybe and then two years of her middle school education, and. During those years, I felt that my daughter's experience was much more, it was much more positive all the way around. And all of that, because, you know, I felt that my input was, you know, valued at that particular time, but all those other years, no, not so much. One of the things that really made the difference with these two educators was that they listened, you know what I mean? They actually took the time to listen and they had genuine care and concern for my daughter. So that really made the difference. So. Ladies, thank you. When George Floyd took his last dying breath, he saw his mama's vision and he called upon her. She stood with him in the unknown. All across the country, mamas like you are leading the way. This episode is dedicated to all the mamas who have lost their children to senseless police brutality and all the mamas standing in the gap to protect their black and brown children. Please join us for our last episode in this series, a roundtable discussion with dads raising black children. To learn more about Path Parent to Parent, Family Voices of Connecticut, and our mission, please subscribe to our monthly newsletter, visit our website, pathct.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on social media. Thank you.